Alright guys, hope you're well. So, we're having a tasting video today. Whoa! Not just any tasting video. The butternut squash wine. Oh, so we started the butternut squash in uh, wine uh, back in uh, October, I believe. And, well, there wasn't much to see, so I just bottled it up and stuck it out the way. And it's been aging for about four months. So if you haven't seen the part one video, stick the link up there so you can see it if you want to. But we've got the butternut squash wine. I've labeled it. Well, I put a permanent marker on it. And it finished at 13%. And on the back, I even had the foresight, knowing that uh, I wasn't doing a bottling video, to put down the starting gravity and the finishing gravity on the bottle that I knew I was going to try. So it finished at 990. So this is bone dry. So uh, anything that's bone dry really does need some aging. Ideally, this would need more aging, but I just, I can't wait. I have to try some. I have to try it now. So uh, yeah, four months, long enough. It's like a year or plus. So uh, I'm just gonna grab a glass and we're gonna drink some wine. Yeah, because I can. So I jumped the gun and uh, I poured myself a glass because I just, I can't help myself. I wanted to try this as soon as it was finished, but I know it would taste like rocket fuel. And that's not what we're about here. So, I mean, it, it looks pretty. Using the pectolase and the amylase has made it all but clear. I mean, it is, it's good. Ah, oh, it has that butternut squash edge to it mixed with wine now we did use wine concentrate which you know that is one of the reasons why i wanted to use it because butternut squash is a very delicate flavor but it goes really well with wine so it was a match made in heaven so we also used amylase and pectolase see i knew i knew my enzymes in there so it is nice and clear if i hadn't have used that it would have had a bit of a haze to it doesn't affect the flavor just how it looks and I wanted this to look good because it's a sexy wine. Now I've talked about it enough. Cheers. That tastes good. So, whoa, wow, that was a big mouthful. So it is 13% and uh, yeah, that, that tastes like it's 13%. Has a nice, strong, strong alcohol flavor. But because it's bone dry, it, it doesn't taste bone dry. It's been aged. It is dry, yet tasty. That's, it is dry and tasty. I can't really say more than that. The butternut squash is in there. I can taste the flavors of it, but I can also taste wine. And alcohol. It's good. I'm, I'm going to drink more. So my glass is empty. There's only one way how to uh, sort or remedy this problem. That's to pour some more. <laughs> so, thoughts. I can honestly say this is the best butternut squash wine I have ever drank. But uh, just as to put it in perspective, this is the only butternut wine, um, butter squash, butter. I haven't drank that much. Butternut squash wine that I have ever drank. So uh, there we go. Oh, I mean, it just looks so good. It tastes really nice. It has this white wine uh, edge to it. It doesn't taste bone dry. Um, even though it's 990 and that is normally desert dry, and I do like a little bit of back sweetening, cable, uh, it, uh, it doesn't taste completely dry. Now that's because some of the butternut squashy goodness is in there, plus the aging time. This is a good wine. Mmm. That is good. Really good. So, if I was going to make this again, because uh, after making this, I, 
I, I really like it. What would I change? Because, you know, that's kind of one of the things that we do as homebrewers. We make something and sometimes it can be a complete failure. But from that failure, you can kind of pick out the bits you like. This, on the other hand, was a complete success. I mean, that's, let's be honest, I've already had a glass. I'm on a second glass. It has those tasty wine aromas. Really good wine aromas. It has edges of butternut squash. I mean, it's... If you know what butternut squash tastes like, think of that, but without any of the sweetness into it. It's sort of melded and infused with the wine. But yeah, I am going to make this again. And I'm going to follow pretty much exactly the same recipe. Because this is damn... This is awesome. I can't... Uh, I'm, I'm surprised. I really am. But I'm not going to argue. Tasty wine. So, I have been... Uh, I have, I've drank this bottle in... Uh, nearly this bottle. In nearly a record amount of time. It is a very tasty bottle of butternut squash wine. Now, I am very fortunate that I have another five bottles. Yeah, I think it's five. I can't count currently. I must be getting hammered. So... To sum up, this wine is actually really good. The recipe itself is pretty accurate. I mean, it's a pretty good recipe. It could do with a little bit more butternut squash to kind of balance out some of those alcohol harshness flavors. But at the same time, this has only been aged for four months. Things like this normally get aged for 12 months or more. So, uh, you could quite possibly have a fantastic wine by just not drinking it. But I wanted to try this wine for months, for four months. And uh, every time I've been looking at my wine rack, I've wanted to try it and be like, no, no, don't do that. Leave it longer, it will taste better. And um, I have, up until now, I've caved. I can't help myself. So, good wine very tasty. Wouldn't change the recipe, possibly I would add in another butternut squash. But all in all, it's really good. Really good. So, on that note, I really hope you enjoyed this video guys, as much as I did, because I really enjoyed this video. Really did. And I got to share it with you guys, which is awesome, because I like it. And, uh... I have wine. And who doesn't like wine? Comment down below if you don't like wine. So, check out some of the other videos if you feel like it. Subscribe, share, like, comment. Because, you know, those, those are all cool things. They help the channel. And uh, I will see you in another video if I don't see you before. So, uh, I've got the rest of this bottle to drink. See you later.